Well, there has been, as you might expect, a lot of anger in the Middle East over Israel's invasion of Gaza, and you can see it reflected in the Arab media. CNN senior editor for Arab Affairs, Octavia Nasser, joins us live now with a look at how our counterparts in that region are covering this conflict. What are you seeing there, Octavia? Reggie, what you're seeing is a lot of emotions. Uh, the coverage on Arab media is very emotional for very good reasons. The reporters for Arab media are uh, not only inside Gaza, they are residents of Gaza. They have families there, so they are on the receiving end of the Israeli incursion. So anytime they report on the story, it is emotional. Let's take a look. On this Lebanese TV station, a tribute to Hamas's rhetoric and actions, such as this Katyusha attack against Israel. Gaza equals dignity, says the video, a dramatic display of support for Hamas and what the station calls, quote, its resistance of the occupying enemy, unquote. On Al Jazeera and other Arab networks, the coverage of Gaza remains emotional with a focus on what's happening inside Gaza, in its hospitals and on its streets. <laughs> Graphic images side by side with animated guests and reporters in helmets and flak jackets, in addition to reports of various protests around the world in condemnation of Israel's incursion and a wide use of technology to explain step by step details of the ground operations, their significance and progress. <laughs> And an unusual sight, both on TV and online, campaigns in support of Gaza interwoven with news coverage. Here on Al Arabiya, an invitation to donate to the United Nations Relief Organization for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA. And while a few Arab leaders made scattered comments in support of the Palestinians in Gaza, in the view of a political cartoonist with a Sharq al awsat it's all lip service that leads nowhere. The words, we support Gaza until the last Palestinian standing, don't leave much for Arab readers to hope for. And, of course, uh, the pounding of Gaza continues by the Israeli military. And uh, we, CNN and, and other uh, international media, are not allowed into Gaza. So that gives the Arab media a lot more access because they're on the inside. So they're definitely reporting the story with a lot of emotions, Reggie. But also some media are taking a stand, fully supporting uh, Hamas in this case, uh, while others are keeping an even tone, uh, bringing in both sides, all sides uh, to the picture. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, because obviously the Arab media is just as wide a spectrum as is the media anywhere else in the Western world. But are, are we seeing generally more blame going towards the Israelis or more blame going right to Hamas? You know, it seems that uh, those who made a decision, such as uh, New TV or Al Jazeera, to, to basically stand on the side of Hamas, they already made up their mind. Uh, the others seem not to have any political color. Uh, so the focus is more on the victims, it's more on the hospitals, the injured, the humanitarian aid, or lack of in, in uh, some cases. Uh, the focus is so much on that, not so much on, on laying blame. Uh, but also there is blame not just on Israel, when there is blame to, to place, not just on Israel, but also the U.S. for supporting Israel's actions action and also a lot of blame on Arab leaders themselves. Uh, Arabs, when they're taken to the streets, they're complaining about their own governments not doing enough uh, to uh, basically help the people of Gaza or do something to change uh, the status quo. Reggie. Since it appears right now, Octavia, that there is no end game here, how much of that is being discussed in the Arab media? Who the person is who's going to come in and resolve all of this with both sides basically saying we're not stopping. Uh, right, and, and you're getting the sense, really, if you're watching Air Media, you are getting the sense of desperation, like this is going nowhere, uh, things are going to get a lot worse before they can get better. But also, uh, yesterday and today, you're hearing more moderate uh, Arab voices, uh, leaders, uh, basically the Emir of Qatar yesterday, spoke very harshly and addressed the Israeli leadership, saying uh, a quote in his own words, saying, 
killing innocent civilians is not going to help your security or our security. Uh, and he called on an emergency Arab summit to discuss the situation, saying that Arabs must speak in one voice in order to affect change uh, on the world, uh, impress the world, and also impress uh, uh, on Israel. Uh, so uh, also the Jordanians are speaking up, the Queen of Jordan, the former Queen of Jordan, Queen Noor, today Queen Rania, uh, the, the Jordanian uh, Prime Minister also uh, said that uh, Jordan reserves all rights to deal with any country, especially Israel, in a way that works uh, to, to, to its own uh, uh, comfort zone. Uh, basically, you're starting to hear these moderate voices trying to uh, impress upon Israel to end the uh, uh, ground operations and this uh, incursion into Gaza in order to at least bring in humanitarian aid to aid to help the people who need it so much inside Gaza. Uh, very important to remember, Reggie, we talk about this a lot. Uh, Gaza is enclosed. It's, it's closed off to the world. It has two openings, one towards Egypt and one towards Israel. And right now, both those borders are closed. Uh, so people are not getting the necessary uh, it, not just uh, food and aid, but also uh, right now they need a lot of medical uh, supplies. Uh, some uh, injured inside Gaza need to leave Gaza in order to be treated elsewhere. So, so these borders are important uh, for the lifeline of Gazans. And uh, people across the Arab world now are asking for some kind of end uh, to the incursion so they can bring help uh, to the people that need it most. I was really hoping we weren't going to still be talking about this day 10, that somehow this would have ended before, and it looks like we're going to be talking about it for the days to come. Octavia Nasser, thanks as always for your help. Thanks, Reggie.